I give it up for your favorite YouTuber. White bread, white bread, white bread, white bread, white bread. Oh, oh my goodness. It's freaking white bread, dude. Oh my gosh. That's what that's what I wish I would have. <laughs> I need I need sound effects, man. I I I can't I can't be doing my own sound effects. I feel like that's a little awkward there to be doing that. So for today's video, we are discovering if 2020 was a simulation. Yeah, we're we're basically gonna uh we're watching a video. It's like a science and math theory. Was 2020 a simulation? I don't know, dude. I don't know. I mean, I'm alive. I'm not dead. No, we're not. But we are gonna see a video saying yes, we might be, and uh, maybe it'll keep the options open. Who knows? Anyways, um, let's get right into it. Scientists are testing to see if we are living in a simulation. Elon Musk is even funding work in this field, and he believes that there is a one in billions of a chance that we live in reality, but we are in a simulation. This video breaks down the science and math behind the simulation hypothesis. We also take a look at how much computer power is needed to simulate a universe. Would we need to build a structure around the sun to capture all of its energy to power such a computer? Is humanity being simulated as 2D beings to save on computer power that then gets projected in 3D? And could we create a simulation for humanity that allows us to travel further into outer space? If you think that simulations are possible, then it is almost certain that we are in one. Dude, this is setting up for straight up Matrix shit right here. Like, I don't know if you've seen the Matrix, but it's definitely something like that. This is definitely gonna be like, we are in the Matrix. People have been questioning for centuries, what is the truth and what is an illusion? From Plato's mm -hmm. allegory of the cave in the Western world to Zhuang Zhu's butterfly dream in the East. Plato, who lived between 428 and 348 BC, tells the tale of people kept in a cave. They grow up only seeing the shadows of other people on a wall. For them, the shadows are the real world. One day, one of the cave people is taken outside. He sees how the outside world is much more real than the one in the cave. He comes back to the cave to free the others, but is now unable to see in the dark. The people inside the cave think it is dangerous outside and refuse to go. The cave represents people who believe that knowledge comes from what we see and hear in the world. Plato said that true knowledge comes from philosophical reasoning. I mean, okay, yeah, I, I can understand uh, Plato's reasoning in it being like, Oh, philosophy is the way to go with knowledge. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's a religion as well. I, I involve myself in a religion, I'm, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like force that down on my channel right yeah you know there's there's different ways of like how we perceive things and everyone has different opinions and thoughts we're, we're all not the same you know we're all you know different human beings so you know Zhuang Zhu, a chinese philosopher who lived in the fourth century bc dreamed that he was a butterfly the butterfly did not know he was Zhuang Zhu. suddenly he woke up and he was Zhuang Zhu. But how can he be sure he is not a butterfly dreaming that he is a person? As both dreaming and waking feel real, how can we tell which one is true? Moving forward to 1977, Philip Kindred, who created the stories for Blade Runner and Minority Report, argued that we are living in a computer programmed... Bro, Minority Report? Yo! I freaking love that movie. Uh, it's the one with Tom Cruise, right? Tom Cruise where he's a cop and then he has to like fight, fight his way and like... Dude, that is dope. I freaking love Minority Reports. Reality. And the only clues we have to it is when some variable is changed and some alteration in reality occurs. Such as when we have an overwhelming impression that we are living in the present. Like deja vu. Elon Musk is another person who questions our reality, using the development of video games as an example of why we are living in a simulation. Right. Elon says that we are clearly on a trajectory to soon have video games that are indistinguishable from reality, and those games will be played on any console or PC, and there would probably be billions of such computers. Okay, I mean, I do get what, what this guy is saying, because, like, VR. VR is basically the first stage of reality. 
or simulating reality, right? That's why it's called virtual reality. And now that people are making like these chest plates that have like, you can like feel like bullets coming at you, hitting hard and stuff. People in not just the gaming industry, but also, you know, the technology industry, I guess, um, they are going really fast into VR. Um, so I can, I can understand this dude. Cause I feel like with how fast we're going with virtual reality, I, in my opinion, I always thought that, you know, chest plates that where you can feel bullets hit you like future future, but like, there's already things like that may not be to the extent of you feeling death right because you can't simulate death while being alive but yeah it's definitely something to think about <laughs> so what is the likelihood that we are living in a simulation let's take a look at the science and math behind the theories working at the university of oxford on existential risk dr nick bostrom whose work is helped funded by elon musk created the foundational theory of the simulation argument he presents three scenarios one the human species will go extinct before creating a simulation of another universe. Oh, I see. Two, advanced civilizations that are capable of creating simulations are not interested in creating simulations of their evolutionary history or a okay. variation of it. Three, the probability that we are living in a simulation is close to one, as we are almost certainly living in a simulation. What? Dude, okay. Close to one? Mmm... I mean, it's nice to think about, but close to one, my guy. This goes back to like one of my oldest videos about aliens, right? I can't believe it until I see it. <laughs> the odds being close to one is just, those odds are way too small. Now the first two I could stay, take a stance on, who would want to make a simulation of their own, right? Like, it's like us, for example. We wouldn't want to keep making games of us, right? I mean, yeah, we have games of humans in there, right? But, like, there's still some, f like, fantasy levels to it. No matter, no matter, like, no matter how real it can be, there's still a bit of fantasy to it. Dr. Bostrom says that since little is known, we must assume for now that each one has an equal likelihood. The book Superintelligence, Paths, Dangers, and Strategies by Dr. Nick Bostrom is one that Elon Musk highly recommends people to read. If we are able to create a simulation, then the chances that we are in one greatly increases. Let's explore why. When would it be possible for us to create a simulation? To figure this out, we just need to take a look at video games and predict how soon in the future we could be playing and living in virtual worlds that people can't tell the difference from the real one. Elon Musk says that we have gone from playing Pong, which is two blocks and a dot, to today's hyper-realistic games with millions of players. And all of this took place in just the last 50 years. He adds that even if the rate of video game advancement drops by 1,000 from what it is today, then imagine it is 10,000 years in the future when we will have simulations, which is nothing on the evolutionary scale. I do see what Elon Musk is saying. The way how video games evolved, it, it's more of an exponential type of growth, right? It's not linear. If it were linear, we'd be like miles away from what what we're playing today, right? I feel like gaming as a whole is in its is in a in a limbo, I guess, or has this problem where it's starting to get hard to make things look real. Because if you look at if you look at video games, especially like especially current video games and how like you've seen like remasters and like you've seen old old video games from like early PS4 to like PS5 now, right? In terms of graphics, it, it it's it's looking more and more real, but it's getting harder and harder to do. In my opinion, I think graphics will always give that cartoony look no matter how real they try to go. At the end of the day, you're still animating. It's still, it's still some sort of animation taken into, into gaming, right? You look at cinematic cutscenes, right? You, you're like, oh my gosh, they're so real. They look so real. But if you actually look at it, it still has that cartoony plastic type of, you know, look to it. I don't, I don't think that you can simulate actual reality to a T. I don't think so unless you stick a camera onto a VR headset and just look around. That's literally it, 
right? We will be able to create powerful video game simulations that even the artificial intelligence living within them will feel like the simulation is their reality. And the artificial intelligence would also create games in virtual worlds, designing multiple layers of simulations. There could be hundreds, thousands, or a million simulated universes. And if only one of the million universes is the real world, the base reality, then the probability that we are in the base reality is one in a million. So if we as humans are able to create a simulation, then the likelihood that we are in one increases. Elon Musk says that the odds that we are in the base reality is more like one in billions. Okay, so if Elon Musk says that if we're in the base reality, it's like one in billions, right? I think we just straight up are. I, I, I don't think that we could possibly be in a simulation. I, I know Elon Musk says that it's a one in billion chance that we're in the base reality, but I think it's flipped around, right? I think it's... It's a one in billion chance if we are in a simulation instead of the base reality. That's, that's my thought. Another scientific experiment being set up to test if we are in a simulation comes from Silas Bean, a nuclear physicist from the University of Washington. He proposes that we could find the limited resolution at which the universe is rendered. Space-time is the mathematical model which combines the three dimensions of space, length, width, and depth with the dimension of time. When physicists simulate small parts of space-time, they break up the universe into a grid-like lattice and mm -hmm. simulate small chunks at a time. Silas Bean and his team look at cosmic rays as visible light. He argues that if the simulation is broken down into a grid, then these high-energy cosmic rays will have energies that vary in different directions. So if we can observe this, then we can prove that we are in a simulation. The next step is to see what happens when real-world cosmic rays hit their instrument. But cosmic rays only hit a square kilometer of Earth once every 100 years, so this will take some time to prove. Okay, you know what, man? Why do I listen to this like I understand what, what they're saying? There are some words that he's saying where it's like, what, what's, the, what's the definition? <laughs> While some people believe that we are in a simulation, others argue that this is not true. William Poundstone, who wrote the book called The Doomsday Calculation, the link is in the description, points out a potential hole in the simulation argument. When we make books, movies, or video games, they are usually made within a few hundred years of our current day. William argues that a simulation would be close in time to that of the simulator's world. In this case, our simulation should have widespread simulation technology and be in a futuristic era. As we do not have this technology, mm -hmm. we would be more of an ancient civilization and be yeah. an unlikely choice for a simulation. Actually, but others argue that this is making assumptions about what an advanced civilization would do with simulation technology. They may have completely different preferences to our own. Okay. And there is no indication that this universe was created for us. We could just be artifacts and byproducts in a simulation that was made to test some hypothetical scenario. Okay, you know what? I do like that argument now. That is a very valid argument on the other side of the, on the other side of the table. You know, it, he is kind of right about that, right? Like we have evolved pretty big in 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 terms of video games or technology, right? With that time, you know, you would think that maybe this advanced civilization that that could be simulating us has given us like more the, the strong rebuttal is that what if the advanced civilization doesn't want to do that and we're just another you know ones and zeros right we just it, it doesn't matter that that's that's very strong arguments on both sides i would say <laughs> another argument comes from cosmologist sean carroll if simulations are possible, then civilizations living in them will be able to create more simulations. There could be thousands of layers, and the deeper you go, the more simulations there are. Mm, so statistically, yeah. the largest number of simulations yeah. and simulated people are in the deepest layer. But each simulation has to be less complex than the universe above it because the computer power will decrease every time a new layer is created. Oh, yeah! That's why video games aren't as good as actual human beings. It, it helps out the we're living in a simulation argument. Because if, you, if computer power gets, gets worse and worse, right? It would make sense because video games we make don't look like our reality. It looks like the reality we see on TV. If we can't create a simulated universe, 
how do we know if a universe could ever be simulated? This is called the Carroll's Contradiction. Many say that this is not a contradiction, and that we can in fact be both in a simulation oh, and unable to simulate Oh, what a cute puppy. Oh my ourselves. goodness, that's such an adorable puppy. Dude, did you not see that? Oh, I want a dog. I want a freaking dog, man. Everything is then projected in 3D, just like 3D movie screens or holograms. Bostrom adds that we can evaluate the cost to create a realistic simulation of all of human history to be between 10 to the power of 33 and 10 to the power of 36 operations per second. R.J. Bradbury, in his paper Matryoshka Brains, estimates that a computer with a mass of a large planet could process 10 to the power of 42 operations per second. To power such a computer, a Dyson sphere would be required, which is a structure that is built around a star, such as our sun, to capture all of its energy. Yeah. Would such a powerful computer allow humanity to transfer its consciousness into a simulation? I don't know. Letting us travel further into space. This is something that we talk more about in our time lapse of future tech video. The link is in the description. If we are able to control the sun, that's dead ass Star Wars vibes right there. That's like Death Star type of thing, you know? Um I don't think I I I don't think we'll ever get to that point. It it possibly can be achievable. I mean, I think I think it it can be achievable. But if you are able to control the sun and use that power into computing power, holy shit, NASA will be rich. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you guys did, please make sure to like and subscribe. And as always, see you guys later. Peace. Adios.